The activity of the researcher takes place within a global process of development of the scientific knowledge, which leads on data sharing. We need both to access existing data and to distribute his own production. Open access provided the suitable tool for reaching these two objectives. Nowadays, disseminating scientific data is an obligation and disseminating them in an open way is the best way for success. Researchers must also overcome new challenges. Selecting relevant information within the huge quantity of data and ensure optimal visibility and reusability of the data they produce. In this context, open data is not sufficient. Hence, the emergence of the concept of open data must deal with technical interoperability, quality of referencing, and permanence of access. Before starting, I'm introducing to you the program PERSE and our work. PERSE is a French public funded program for the digitization and online publishing of printed academic journals in the field of humanities and social science. PERSE was funded in 2003 after being a candidate to a public market from the French Minister of Research and Art Education. The goal we set ourselves is to provide a support service for the development of scientific research. It enhances the visibility of French scientific production with several objectives. Promote a free access, disseminate enriched data, promote an active policies of content referencing near international computer system, <coughs> provide the interoperability of data, and use open formats and promote unrich uses. Our journal collection is characterized by three particularities. The language, our collection is mainly composed by francophone journals. The field, since the foundation of our program, our speciality was the field of humanities and social science. In the beginning of 2015, we have completed our collection with a hard science as biology, geology, and physics. The last particularity is the selection of our journals we disseminate. They should respond of a high level of scientific standing. That's why the journals must be listed by an institutional reference index as ERI, the European Reference Index for the Humanities, or the IRS, the Evaluation Agency for Research and Art Education. As soon as Percy Boards of Examiners had selected the journals, we reserved the exhaustive collection and then the physical treatment on books could begin. You can see on this slide a diagram which provides a gra graphical overview of Percy production lines synthesized in the most important steps. The first production process is based on paper journals. The journal's editorial committee send us their exhaustive collection. All books are guillotined and the treatment is destructive for books. The second production line is based on the processing of digital documents like PDF. We extract images and text in XML format, then we insert the data in our application. Then we are making a metadata enrichment for structured documentation. What are the title, what are the endnote page, what are the illustration, etc. I would not describe all these steps. Now we are going to see what are the main principles of open data. What are the benefits of using the open access and how to applicate it. <coughs> so what are the main principles of open data? The best answer is given by the BBB definition. This acronym is, co is corresponding to three reflections uh, known as Budapest, Bethesda, and Berlin. The Berlin Declaration on Open Access to Knowledge in the Science and Humanities, redacted on 22 October 2003, defined open access as a comprehensive source of human knowledge and cultural heritage that has been approved by the scientific community. This declaration is completed by this consideration in order to realize the vision of a global and accessible presentation of knowledge, 
the future web has to be sustainable, interactive and transparent. Content and software tools must be openly accessible and compatible. So, in the light of this declaration and on our experience, we can argue that the open access is based on several principles. The free access, facilitating data sharing, facilitating dissemination of scientific data, creating an intelligible data database with Sparker, for example, ensure the interoperability with other platforms, and finally, the necessary using of standards for the data representation and diffusion. For this mission, two processes are necessary. On the one hand, the data coding and storage for ensure the sharing of documents. And on the other hand, the alignment and the reference data formats. And of course, we must engage a protocol for the long-term preservation of data, storage and formats. <clears throat> the advantage of using open access are obvious. The main argument is the free licensing <coughs> software, and that's an essential point for academics. Then, by the free sharing, we are assuring the perennity of data, thanks to huge community of users. The open data is necessarily commutative and thus collaborative. The huge and free dissemination of scientific knowledge is a necessary way for the scientific progress. <coughs> Now, we know what are the principles and the benefits of open access sharing. Now, let's see what are the usings in terms of technical competencies and application. The researcher and the scientific institutions must set up in an informatical and technical infrastructure to assume open data diffusion. Most of the time, this economic investment is a problem for university or laboratory. In this case, the researcher can make the choice to use an open access platform for disseminate his work like the French HAL or Academia.com or ResearchGate, etc. Whatever the dissemination you choose, the open data corresponds to a community of customs and uses. Among these different formats, per se, as children, the most frequently used. For sharing data, we must keep in mind the three kinds of existing exchange. The users who are looking for information, the computer which harvested the database, and the data transfer to preserve. The person using must be guaranteed by the free and illimited access and to consult the document in full text without limitation. The computer using must allow the collection of information using standard formats that's the interoperability. The long-term using must ensure the data storage with long-term institutes. It's important to preserve data, but also the technology for read them. In to ensure these three kinds of uses, we've made the choice to work with standards format and we have redacted a document which explain our uses in order to make available, usable, and exportable our data. For example, our guidelines has already been taken up by French digital libraries iRevue.org and Kern. Concretely, this approach is reflected by the selection of the format best suited for our needs. The data format in TEI or Erudit Schema, the metadata in Dublin Core, MARC, MADS, Mods, the structuration of data in METS. Since 2003, this reflection has underlined our work for scientific or journals. Now we apply all these guidelines to new kind of materials, corpus, characterized both by the heterogeneity of the documents and by the specialist tool to be settled up in order to satisfy the searcher's need. For illustrating my points, I'm pre presenting to you two projects of Percé in the field of archaeology. The objectives of this new project are the treatment of scientific corpus, the digitization of exhaustive documentation, and the input of an added value with augmented metadata. 
The first is the Atta project about the Cairo monuments in Egypt. And the second project is about Salamine of Cyprus and is concerning the whole archaeological documentation about this excavation. I will show you how we have decided to structure this documentation, how to disseminate them, and how we can offer a considerable added value. The project Atha asks for ambition to digitize and to provide the works of the Committee for the Conservation of the Monuments of Arab Art. This yearly publication identifies, compiles, and describes all ancient Islamic and Copt monuments into restoring them. For the historian or historian of art, we are studying the historiography of, of Islamic art, the history of preservation at the patrimonial monuments of Egypt. This corpus constitutes a unique source of data. Its value is based on the number of described monuments, the quality of architectural and historical information, the amount of technical documentation taken from restoration work sites, the prosopography of actors and all the photographical archive. Due to its great scientific interest and also because of progressive disappearance of the ancient monuments, today on 800 monuments identified since 1880, 300 have already disappeared. So we must act to preserve and disseminate these, uh, these data. Our project is broadcasting the scan page image and enriched TEI text. The main difficulties are the typologic treatment for the transliteration of Arabic name. Our main goal was the elaboration of technology, tools, and a huge index for the valorization of this textual and iconographical corpus. The project illustrates the method used for transforming a collection which is hardly accessible into a huge package of information in open way, giving a new life to these informations. On this slide, you can see our tool called <coughs> Gigalit. This tool developed by the Perse team allows the creation of metadata. You can see on the left the arborescence which represents all the journal pages. All pages are scanned, imaged, augmented with optical character recognition. We can create a dome, the red block that you can see here. This block opens a window, then we must choose at first the level of the title, here it's a level one title. Then we must choose the language used for this text. Behind of this tool, you must imagine a huge database. The first step for indexation was the insertion of an index inside our database. Our partners gave us uh, that numerical index of ancient monuments name. <coughs> we have inserted this index in our dictionary database. When we proceed to the optical character recognition on the full text, the software is looking for the words in the standard dictionary and looking for the unknown words like name or location in the index name for finding correspondence. All these informations are encoding with TEI. Then when the monument's name are recognized, we must give a specification about its typolo typological performance. If that's a cursive Arabic form, a transliteration. So when this work will be completely achieved, we could spread in a huge multilingual index with the name of all ancient monuments, integrating all the information about them and presenting all the existing typographic form for its name. The final objective are to propose a huge database on XML schema for a tool for indexation. The corpus constitutes the global basement for dissemination of information. <coughs> the index name has been inserted in the GeoCorpus GeoName and present the site and its location in the city. As you can see, these information are feeding other platforms. The format Mark XML is feeding the Sudoc and the library catalog. The format XML Dublin Core in TEI is used for the interoperability with other open access platforms like the Canadian one Erudi 
of the French platform Isidore for the open dissemination in social science and humanities. <coughs> All the data we are producing are compatible with the query language standard Sparkle. <coughs> the second project is the digitization of the archive of the French archaeological survey to Salamine of Cyprus. <coughs> this corpus constitutes a huge, a unique documentary collection about these ancient sites. The excavation started in 1964 under the direction of Jean Pouillou <coughs> and have been continuing since 1974. At this date, half of the island became Turkish, so the access to Salamin was forbidden. All the work on Salamin stopped at this, at this time. From this date, the <coughs> ancient site remains inaccessible to research as all the artifacts dig it up. Today, most of the artifacts are today destroyed or have disappeared. That's why it's important to ensure the preservation of the remain objects. As you can understand, this documentation constitutes the only available documentation of the archaeological site of Salamin of Cyprus. This project is of particular importance since it allows, in the same time, the scientific and the patrimonial valorization and ensures the preservation of the remaining documents. This the documentation ensures a huge dissemination of these primary data the development and the renewal of research about this archaeological site and provide the good conservation of the documentation. Some of the files are so old, they are starting to deteriorate. These older documents are fragile and the, the digitization could allow the manipulation without a risk of damage or destruction. You can see here the kind of documents we'll deal with. The production of data is provided by both institution partners. The Maison de l'Orient et de la Méditerranée will provide the digitization of the excavation documentation as field notebooks, excavation photography, index card, map, drawing, for resume, all the documentation relative to an excavation. <coughs> all documents and information are indexed in the format called modes and scores, which allowed the complete description of documents. All these informations constitute the metadata and corresponding of to a standard format established by the Library of Congress for the description of documents. Per se digitized the scientific publication and created metadata. We are creating bibliographical <coughs> reference, the digital object identifier for each article, the links between the author and the database EDRF, and all metadata that we usually produce on journals. <coughs> when the production step is over, we can begin to disseminate, to disseminate all the data. Here, we see the results on our portal. For example, we have made a research on the corpus of Salamin of Cyprus. The full text on the right side is provided by Percy. On the left side, you can see the results of the interoperability between our data and the data provided by the Maison de l'Orient Méditerranée. We have indexed the OCR text and made links between terms and publication and the same terms in the index of the Braille literature. So, you can see in this, in this third page, there is several associated documents. You can see here the list on the material with the identification number, and on the left, we've made a link between this artifact number and the indexed card or photography, etc. At the conclusion, the open data requires a strong application support which supposes a technical team and thus a sustainable and solid investment from institutional structure. Even if your institution develops a policy of open access, there is no assurance that these policies will be extended. And that the main difficulties, the best way for researcher is to resort to a known institution in the using of open data. Today, there is a wide selection of choice. It's important to communicate both appropriate conditions, 
the human and technical support, <coughs> and political and economic stability. These two conditions are essential for the viability of a project. If these conditions are not met, it's best to choose an existing platform of dif dissemination. Today, for a researcher, it's the best way for success in the good spreading of scientific data. The multiplication of open scientific platform encourages the personal and voluntary action of open dissemination. And you see here a uh, few examples of um, open platform. Per se, Al and Umanu, which are mainly French platform. I thank you for your attention.